Okay, well, the back plate is uh, mounted to my little sub spindle. Um, it is ready to be turned on the face. Uh, it's going to ring like a bell. And the OD. Uh, I kind of made a mistake. Um, my print had it finishing out at one inches, but it turns out the spindles on these lays are one inch. So I should have made it one and eighth, made this three eighths, made this. 11 sixteenths or whatever or made it three quarter and just had this three eighths anyway it was a mistake all the way around but so instead of facing this to finish at three quarter i'm just going to clean it up and i'll stick it over in the rockwell which has this native spindle taper and uh finish turn it and then i'll come back here and i'll be able to do the v grooves <laughs> slow it down because that stuff's going out there really hot and angry. That's a little more than I wanted, but I'll just clean it up on the other lathe. Okay. Man, you can say whatever you want about McMaster, but that nearly cleaned up, except right there with 10,000. to turn my set my camera up but I just turned the outside finished it out see what we're measuring in it shooting for nine inches exactly where do we land uh, that says right on the money bang on perfect not that it matters just you know machinists are dumb and like that fun That's so fucking stupid. Okay, well this is a pretty big part. Gotta be able to make sure I can face the center. And I can. So I'm gonna run this in high gear actually because I, even though it starts out a little high on the surface feet per minute, I wanna be able to maintain constant surface feet per minute and I can actually do that since this is a, uh, a uh, reeves drive lathe. That's 250, and I'll re-engage the bull gear, disengage the back gear. I'm going to do a carriage stop, and I'm just going to touch it off, and probably take off about, uh, probably only, I'm just shy right there. I think it'll clean with three and a half thou. <laughs> wow. 
That's really nice. That's incredibly nice. Holy smokes. The square is a straight edge. Oh, wow. All right, well, that's perfect. <laughs> About two tenths. About one tenth. About two tenths. We're good to go. It should repeat. Threaded chucks almost always do, but it's good to see that science hasn't failed suddenly. Time to make this guy grooved. Um, got them R4 to R1. So they're one inch diameter steps, half inch radius steps. So this could make it or break it if it looks good or not. I'm going to try and be real cautious and take it slow. Start in this outermost one first and then we'll just go from there. 50 RPM. Yep, looks pretty good. So I'm going to go in one inch in the diameter this is a 0.1 inch screw so i need to basically do five turns so one two three four five and i'm going to absolutely double check that with a scale right at half inch Yeah, it's a pretty small groove. Definitely visible. Let's go to 10. I'm liking it. I'm going to do 15. And that's it. Cool. Okay, so I thought about it a little bit and I had a little change of plans. Six slots really isn't all that useful, you know, doing a lot of square stuff or stuff with four bolt patterns. So I figured whoever's going to use this would probably appreciate four better. But, you know, it's nice to have some extra clamping slots for balancers or whatever. So I went with eight, having them short slots. Also went from half inch for like a 3 8 T nut or whatever it is down to three-eighths for a five-sixteenths T-nut or, you know, just a bolt, whatever whatever anyone uses. Um, kept all the other dimensions the same. Did a little FEA on it. This one's actually 10% stiffer, so uh, should be good. Let's uh, let's give it a go. All right, got it up on some, uh, some long parallels, clamped down. To indicate it in, I used my uh, turning stud backwards, a couple of crappy... Uh, gauge blocks and then put an indicator on that and uh, it runs within about a thou and I could chase it all night and not really get any better than that so I think that'll have to do so my strategy is going to be to drill all the holes first hopefully not screwing that up after I get the machine dialed over over the center and then I'll machine the slots. All right, well, kind of nerve wracking, but I've got all my dial locations marked. Um, got that guy marked. I've got a DRO set. I know my numbers. I went through, went all the way around and kind of prick marked each of them with a reground tap. So I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. So I'm going to drill all my holes first and then I'll come back and slot it.
All right, well, we are seriously lacking in um, 3 8 inch end mills, but I found one. All right, well, let's go for it. All right, first one's done. Other than where I stopped it, it looks really good. Where I stopped, it, there's a little bit of a side from it, side to side movement from it chattering, but shit. Otherwise, it's fantastic. Okay, cool. Let's go 90 degrees. Last pass. Okay, so I re-indicated the plate and went ahead and chamfered the back side. I didn't have a proper 45 degree end mill. I really wish I did or I had a thought ahead. Uh, all I had is this kind of hand ground, like 118 degree chamfer, but you know, it's the back side and uh, nobody's really going to be looking at it. I wanted to get it done today and not wait a week for, or uh, wait until Monday, I guess, or Tuesday for McMaster to get here and spend another $40. But uh, to line it back in, I indicated it true with the rotary table, and then I plunged a, um, a gauge pin down at the slots, and then I reclocked my tag and my hand wheel to match. Uh, and what I found is that these slots were not totally consistent. So what I ended up doing is uh, figuring out the timing on each of these. These are on time, eight late, four late, numbers of lines late or early um, and once I had that in there they pretty much all came out good there's a couple that are a little bit off but uh, again it's the back and uh, to me to my eye looks pretty nice so that that's uh, that's everything to do on this even after all the slots were put in it the uh, oh no it's still pretty good very important thing um, when talking about any rotating assembly is balance. So that's why I made I made this balancing shaft, just a uh, inch and a half eight aluminum shaft, specifically for this project, but also any future uh, one inch eight tooling. And um, it was really a waste of time. This thing, anywhere you stop it, it pretty much stays put, which is great, meaning that. Uh, I'm sure the guy that gets it running at 50 RPM will uh, never notice either way, but it's good to know that it's balanced. You know, if he wants to run it at 1500, it'll do it just fine. Smooth silk. Well, that's all I got for the faceplate. It is 100% complete and ready to be put to work. I'm really pretty ecstatic with how it came out. I mean, the flaws are extremely minimal and everything else is really pretty nice. The 
Threads came out good, the grooves came out good, the slots came out pretty good, a little bit of filing, and the chamfers aren't 100% even. Chamfer looks good, uh, backs a little rough in there, and you know the back chamfer wasn't as good as I would like due to not having the right end mill, but overall, man, um, this was a good skills building exercise and really skills affirming exercise, you know, wanted to see can I draw a faceplate in CAD that I think looks good and then manufacture that same faceplate and have it be good? And I think the answer to that is yes. Proves that having a heavy but inaccurate lathe and a light but accurate lathe makes a killer combination that can produce some really stellar results. Um, so yeah, this is a really fun project. And if anyone wants to replicate this, I'll make the few changes I made to this put those on the print and distribute a step file. And those will probably be in my Google Drive, which I'll have down in the description. So give it a shot if you want to do something like this. It's pretty fun. Um, so with that, that's a wrap. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.